this feel like, Bryn, this is the moment of truth, right? After you've had this big run up into the numbers on expectations that earnings are going to be pretty good, growth is going to rebound. It doesn't yep. feel like we're overstating that. I mean, the, the, the outlooks better sound good, or you're going to have people saying that the move in the market is not justified. Well, I think, as uh, you know, Mark Twain said, whenever you know you find yourself uh, on the side of the majority, it's time to pause. It's time to pause and reflect. And I feel kind of like that with all these analysts upgrade. Everyone's bullish. There's no chance of recession. People are saying. I think definitely this quarter is going to be so important. I think as in, as you're buying individual names. Those companies that beat have good guidance, will do well. And I think look out below for the companies that come in um, subpar. And I think you saw Five Below today came out and announced, and the stock has just gotten hammered. And so I think that as an investor, know what you own. Um, but once again, signs are good. The Fed's non-QE QE continues. Yep. And as long as that's here to stay, I think markets are going to go higher. Good time, Josh, to talk about positioning, which Deutsche Bank says today is very stretched. It's kind of the idea that, you know, there are a lot of people now on the same side of the boat, as Bryn's talking about. Um, consensus is that things are going to be pretty good. Money's been put to work uh, in the market. Expectations, as I said, are high. The slew of upgrades comes, continues today. Goldman Sachs gets another bump. Which feels like it's 20th in the last uh, few weeks going right into the numbers, which begin in earnest tomorrow. Yeah, so I, I just think we have to look at beyond how well the markets have done in the last three or four months. And keep in mind, we had 18 months of zero progress for the S&P um, throughout all of 2018 and most of 2019, quite frankly. Um, and even the small caps still haven't made a new high. Uh, so it, it's not as though this has been going on and on and on and on. We really did pay for the earnings recession of 19 uh, throughout the course of 18. And if you do get a little bit of a reacceleration in earnings, you don't need a lot. I wouldn't say it would justify further multiple expansion, but it could keep the overall market where it is. Um, Joe mentioned emerging markets. I, I've been I've been hitting that uh, hitting that note all year so far. I want to point out relative strength for emerging markets right now is at the highest level we've seen since June of 2018. Russian stocks, the RSX is how you can track that. Um, highest level since June of 2014, that's six years ago. Uh, and then you've got the economically sensitive names doing things that we haven't been able to talk about for a long time. Freeport McMoran, I would argue, is one of the most global economy uh, sensitive names in the market. FCX um, making a huge move. Looks like it's about to break out. When was the last time anyone said anything positive or could about FCX on, on the network? Transport's also economically sensitive, hanging at the higher end of the range. That could be a breakout still to come. So I think we've got to look at more than just is the S&P stretched. What is the overall environment, global stocks, economically sensitive stocks, Nice things are happening there in price. We'll see if the fundamentals end up confirming that three months from now, six right. months from now. All right.